These five features will help you frame your shots, distract your subject less, get better sound, and hopefully miss fewer important moments. I'll be spending the entire month of May shooting a documentary with this C70, one man band, run and gun style shooting. I stumbled upon a few settings and features that I've never talked about in previous videos, but I will be relying upon heavily. And let's start with number one, the most important to me, pre-record. I never use pre-record for corporate videos or commercial work, but for documentaries, it's, it's straight up black magic. The camera is essentially always rolling. And whenever you hit record, the camera will go back two seconds in time and start saving to the SD card at that point. Having the ability to hear someone start a sentence, hit record, and capture the beginning of the sentence that you missed is incredible. And that's why I will use it probably 100% of the time I'm shooting this documentary. My documentary that's coming up is going to be a tour doc for a band, and I've toured with this band twice in the past. The first time was on an A7S Mark I. If I was awake, the camera was rolling. And when I got back to edit, it took me months because I had so much footage. I both didn't know what I was doing and really didn't have any better options because without pre-record, if you don't wanna miss important moments, you have to be always rolling even if it's an eight hour van ride with intermittent conversations. There are two small downsides with pre-record. First, you cannot shoot raw. I probably was not going to shoot raw anyway because shooting for a month plus with file sizes that are over double what I'm used to shooting with wasn't super appealing for me as someone who will be backing up to hard drives before going to bed every night. And the second downside, if you wanna even call it that, is that you're gonna have to deal with a lot of useless footage two seconds to be exact of useless footage at the beginning of most of your clips. A lot of footage of picking the camera up to get a shot or taking your lens cap off or dialing in your settings because naturally when you hit record, you want to start recording then. And if it's a B-roll shot, you don't want those two seconds of junk before you hit record. But maybe over the course of the month, living with the camera in my hands, I'll get accustomed to setting up the shot, mentally knowing it's recording and hitting the record button two seconds into taking the shot but that might be making this too convoluted. If you throw a camera in the mix, people will always act differently. That's human nature. But if you have a big red light letting them know that you're recording when you have the camera on them, that tends to have more of an impact. So I personally used to put black gaff tape over the tally light on previous cinema cameras. The C70 allows you to simply just turn it off. This is obviously great for documentaries, but even for corporate talking head videos, I prefer it. I feel like nearly every time I shoot an interview, as soon as we say cut, the subject will turn to the director and casually and honestly start discussing the thing that they should have been casually and honestly discussing during the shoot. So not advertising when you are and are not recording can lead to capturing great moments, especially in documentary settings. Aspect markers. The C70 allows you to choose your aspect ratio there's a huge list of them built into the camera and then you can dial in your exact desired opacity for those markers. I will be shooting this documentary in 2351. If you're a subscriber, you probably know that I've been on a little bit of an aspect ratio kick recently. I shot a music video in 2351 and some YouTube videos in it as well. Those were all tests in preparation for this documentary. Whenever I see 30 frames per second or motion smoothing on someone's TV, my brain instantly knows that that is not 24 frames a second, and I know that it doesn't look cinematic. I think I'm finally there with aspect ratios. I'm now subconsciously and consciously realizing when things look more cinematic because of the aspect ratio. It was pretty unanimous in the YouTube comments on the videos that I did make in 2351 that you all seem to like it as well. One limitation of this feature is during playback. If you want to review a clip that you just shot, you will see the full readout of the image, and there's no way to look at the black bars when you're reviewing a clip. So you're not really getting an accurate representation of what your image will look like in the edit. Slow motion audio. Specifically WAV files on the C70 that are saved to the SD card slot B when you're shooting in slow and fast mode. Normal slow and fast mode, which is in-camera slow motion, has no audio. If you happen to have the luxury of a sound guy, that doesn't really matter. But if you're like me with the C70 and you have your shotgun mic on top and two people lobbed up going all directly into the camera, if you switch to a recording mode that isn't capturing audio and someone says something, you're gonna miss it. I personally don't use the slow and fast mode on the C70 very often because you do get much better autofocus if you switch your frame rate manually. However, you cannot get 120 unless you're in slow and fast mode. 
When you're in this setting, the camera will show you how many minutes of audio you have, which will be astronomical because they're audio files. And then when you leave slow and fast mode, it'll go back to displaying the amount of video minutes with your chosen camera settings. And lastly, number five, there is no number five. I just had four, but top five just sounded so much better as a title. If you're interested in more C70 documentary content, subscribe because I know I'll have tons to talk about after using the C70 day in and day out for over a month on this upcoming project.